Well, hey, everybody. Welcome to Living Power, your online Bible study where we are walking through the Bible in a year. Today is May 4th, and we are living the life of David. We are in 1 Chronicles 26 to 28, and the census has just been taken. We talked yesterday about some of the roles of the priests and their plans to create this magnificent temple um, which uh, over a site which used to be a threshing floor, and it is on Mount Moriah, which is where Abraham almost sacrificed Isaac, but where God provided a sacrifice. And this is to be the place where God desires to be worshipped. Uh, the census was never recorded. It was never finished. Um, so we really um, we don't have an accurate record of the total number of able fighting men from the tribes. And it's probably because it's simply not necessary for us to know that. The um, offices that David needed, now he was, he was King David, he was nearing the end of his reign. Um, it is uh, 970 B.C. David reigned 40 years. We are in the 40th year of his reign, so he is getting older. I think um, we're in his last days of his life, actually. In a couple of days from now, we're going to read about his, um, his death. So we have a couple more days with him. Um, but he's about 70 years old at this point. And the reading today lists some of the offices that he needs uh, as he is king. Uh, I just wanted to share them with you. Uh, gatekeepers, people who kept the treasury, the army, people who were in charge of land, the food supplies. He listed a counselor, a teacher, an advisor. I thought it was funny that he even listed a friend. Now, if I'm ever listed in, in an annal of anything, I'd like to be listed as somebody's good friend. I thought I, that made me just stop and read again. Somebody got listed as David's good friend. Uh, I did think there was something missing from that list. That list looks pretty complete, but what was one source of David's strength and wisdom that's not listed there? It's the Bible. And you, if we read Psalm 119, verse 24, it says, Your laws please me and give me wise advice. So if we were to keep an accurate list, we would have to say God's word was certainly um, what he considered to be his, his great counselor. This is my cat, and he just jumped up on my lap, so he's uh, trying to be a little bit distracting. But this is Caesar. He's a member of our class, if you've not met him yet. And he likes to, um, here he is. <laughs> he's purring. He likes to um, be part of our Bible study. When I was reading about David today, I thought how similar he was to Moses in many ways. Here's what I was thinking. Um, David, like Moses, convened the people together and then announced the plans to everyone. David, like Moses, warned them to obey in order to maintain their blessings and keep being prosperous in the land. David, like Moses, worshipped and served him with his whole heart. He admonished the people to be strong, be courageous, and do the work. David, like Moses, gave Solomon plans for the temple, which he had received from the Lord by inspiration from the Spirit. They were both very careful to let their counterparts know how to the letter and precise they had to be in following the guidelines. They weren't really guidelines. They were rules that God gave in constructing the tabernacle, as with Moses, and, of course, the temple with David. Priests will serve in the temple, and others will volunteer. They both had faith that God would bring the necessary people together and in, fill them with inspiration from the Holy Spirit, skilled, being skilled workers to do the work, and that God would bring it to pass. So I thought that was neat. There were so many similarities there between David and Moses. Yesterday we mentioned that the Levites were getting a new job to do. Oftentimes when we are transported from one place to another, maybe it's with a layoff or maybe it's a reorganization in a company, which is happening so frequently today, and we find ourselves, after having done a particular job for so many years, being asked to do something totally different. This was what the Levites were being asked to do. Um, since the time of the judges, think about it, for hundreds of years, 
They were known as the Levites, but they didn't have a lot to do. The tabernacle wasn't being moved. The people weren't being moved from place to place. And here, um, their great responsibility was being restored to them. Today we learn about gatekeepers and that the gatekeepers um, were, would be responsible for opening and closing the outer gates of the city. Very important. We don't have a concept of that here in America today, but in the city they would have built a very great wall and it would have protected them and they would have shut the gates at night and they would have opened the gates in the morning. This was the role of the gatekeepers. The gatekeepers um, would have been also responsible to direct people who were coming there to worship, uh, sort of like our parking attendants today. They would have also been responsible to encourage the timid, you know, go forward into the, um, the, the courtyard of women, or this is how you get to the court of men, or whatever it was, kind of like our greeters of today. The gatekeepers would have sent out strangers and prevented the unclean from coming um, into the... Um, into the temple area, and they, of course, would have guarded against thieves, which would have been um, a reason for their, them to have, have strength. There was a person, a Levite, that is mentioned today in 1 Chronicles 26, 5. Obed-Edom is his name, and we read about him today. It specifically said that he was a gatekeeper on the south side, along with nine sons and 62 of his family members. I am wondering if you perhaps were wondering why he was singled out and why he was mentioned. Well, we read about him before, and you might have missed it. He's the one, after David tried to move the ark, and remember it fell off the cart, and this guy, um, Uzzah, tried to steady it and he touched the ark and he immediately died because no one was permitted to touch or look into the ark. And, and remember David was so upset by this and it prompted him to go back to the book of the law and to read the regulations that God set out as far as moving the tabernacle. After that they were very careful, much more careful in carrying out the law as God has, had prescribed. But there was a man who said, I'll keep the ark. And he kept it in his home for three months. This was this guy, Obed-Edom. And he took the ark without hesitation when even David was afraid of it. And it said as long as the ark was in his home, God blessed him and gave him a full family and many sons. So that just reminds me that those entrusted with something small at the beginning will be given something much greater later on, and that we shouldn't despise small beginnings, whatever it is, small family, small ministry, small business, whatever it is, don't despise small beginnings. Just be faithful in what we have and give it into the Lord and he will richly bless it. Now we also see that there was a role for people responsible for the treasury. And remember people um, all throughout Israel were required to come here you know, to Jerusalem and give sacrifices, flour, oil, salt, fuel, lamps, utensils, gold. Um, they would have brought spoils of war, all kinds of things, and there would have been a lot of treasure there, so there was a lot of work to do there. Uh, we also see the mention of officials and judges. What would they have done? They would have managed the affairs of the country. They were probably responsible for a plot of land and overseeing the people uh, within it. They would have collected God's tithes and the king's taxes. They would have guarded the people against idolatry and injustices and they would have executed the laws, uh, maybe judging over disputes in that particular area. We also see a mention about the military, and we're told that 24,000 men were on guard every month and that David rotated the military again using a system of order. So if they had 24,000 that rotated every month, that would have been 288,000 people in the military um, that could be called on at any time. All right, I want to remind you about a... Um, Scripture in Acts that we didn't read today, but it does pertain to the end of David's life. Acts 13.36 says, David did the will of God in his own generation, and then he died. He doesn't die today in today's reading, but over the next couple of days that he will. And I just love that scripture. Will it be said of you? 
when you die that you did the will of God in your own generation. Wow, I, I love that scripture. So here's the application for today. You know, if we think about the accomplishments of David, um, everything that he had victory, he had success in his life, was to be credited to the blessings of God and the fellowship that he maintained in knowing um, and walking with God throughout his life. Um, it also makes me remember how he thought about things, his thinking about things made all the difference. And that's why I've pulled out the verse today, 1 Chronicles 28, 9. Worship and serve him with your whole heart and a willing mind. A willing mind. I think that's so key. Remember how David uh, always inquired of the Lord before he acted? He never came to conclusion before he sought advice from the Lord. Remember how he let God be God and he didn't always avenge his enemies. He didn't kill Saul the two times that he could have, but he let God fight his battles for him. Remember how David waited on God? Remember he was waiting 12 to 15 years while Saul was pursuing him during those years of hiding? In God's timing, he placed David on the throne and they together did much for Israel. David was called by God himself, a man after God's own heart. And I think that that is because the key verse today, David learned how to worship and serve him with his whole heart and a willing mind. The mind is the key to our emotions and our behavior. If we want to change the things that we say, if we want to change the things that we do, we must first change the way that we think. And Paul tells us in the New Testament that change comes as we renew our mind. And one of the best things that you can do to renew your mind and change the way you think about a circumstance is to stay in the Word. And that's what we're doing this year is we are renewing our minds by the power of God's spoken and written Word as we walk through the Bible this year. Well, I hope this has been a blessing to you. I pray blessings on you as you seek to renew your mind and change the way you think. If God is calling you in any area of your life to change the way you think, we must first ask what God thinks about the situation. And then we can come to understand truth behind it, for God is all about truth. Well, that's all the time we have today. I pray that you've enjoyed this lesson and that you will continue with me uh, over the next couple of days as we conclude the life of David and we enter into the, the time where Solomon is reigning as king over Israel and the blessings of prosperity that we will see during this time in the life of Israel. Blessings to you and your family. Shalom.